Hi, I'm Brian, your tutor for the Advanced Mathematics Unit. In this lesson, we'll go over polynomial factors. Polynomial factors. That sounds pretty intimidating, doesn't it? What if I told you that fancy term just means when does it equal zero? A bit more manageable, right? But we still need to learn how to work with it. So let's get into this lesson. The best place to start is with a definition. A polynomial is an algebraic expression that has multiple terms. What does that mean? Here's an example. x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is an algebraic expression with three terms, aka a polynomial with three terms. And here's a polynomial with four terms, and one with five terms. On the SAT, there's a good chance you'll see a polynomial written as either a function or as an equation. OK, so we know that a polynomial is just an algebraic expression with multiple terms. But what's a zero? A zero is a number that, when plugged into the variables in a polynomial, makes the polynomial equal to zero. A synonym for zero is root. Asking for the zeros of an equation is the same thing as asking for its roots. And since we're on the topic of synonyms, take note that the SAT could ask you for the zeros of a polynomial, a function, or an equation. It's all the same thing, at least as far as you're concerned for the SAT. Let's take a look at a graph of a polynomial to get a better understanding. The zeros of a graph are the places where y equals zero. In this example, there are three x values for which this polynomial equals zero. Therefore, we can say this polynomial has three zeros. This polynomial has two zeros. Do you know how many zeros this polynomial has? If you said five, you're right. We can also find the zeros of a polynomial just by looking at its equation. The zeros are any numbers that would make the equation equal to zero when you plug them in. For example, in the equation y equals x minus 2 times x plus 3, the zeros are any values for x that will make y equal 0. We have two sets of parentheses being multiplied together. If the contents of one of these parentheses equals 0, then the whole equation will be equal to 0. So we want to start by checking out the quantity of x minus 2. Set x minus 2 equal to 0. Add 2 to both sides and we find that one of the zeros of this equation is x equals 2. But there's a second set of parentheses, so let's check that out as well. If we can set the numbers in these parentheses equal to 0, we've found another 0 of our equation. So let's set x plus 3 equal to 0. Then just a bit of algebra by subtracting 3 from both sides, and we find the second 0 of this equation, x equals negative 3. Since we've now examined all the variables in this equation, we've found all the possible zeros. 2 and negative 3. Now let's look at a question similar to what you might see on the SAT. What are the zeros of polynomial p of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 12? Our answer choices each give us two options for x. As always, we'll start by underlining the facts, circling the keywords, and labeling the answer choices. But if you'll notice, there are no parentheses in this equation. So we can't use the technique we just used in the previous example. But there are a couple of things we can do. We can either factor this equation, because factoring would tell us what the zeros are, or even easier, we can just back solve. As we know, when it comes to math, simpler is always better. So let's back solve. Since our answer choices are all possible values for x, we want to plug the answer choices in for x. We'll start with one of the two middle answer choices, choice c. We'll start by plugging 2 in for x. If that makes our polynomial equal 0, we'll know we found one of the zeros. So we have 2 squared plus 8 times 2 plus 12. Does that equal 0? Nope, not even close. 2 is wrong. So answer choice C is wrong. And 2 seems to be too big, so we should probably move in the other direction. Let's try answer choice B. We'll start with negative 2. We get negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 12. That equals 4 minus 16 plus 12. And sure enough, that equals 0. We know that negative 2 is one of the zeros of this polynomial, so we can cross off any answer choice that doesn't have a negative 2 in it. We're left with a and b. We haven't finished looking at b yet, so let's plug in negative 6 and see what happens. We have negative 6 squared plus 8 times negative 6 plus 12. That gives us 36 minus 48 plus 12. And would you look at that? We found our second zero. Negative 2 and negative 6 are both zeros of the polynomial, so answer choice B is correct. OK, we've learned how to identify the zeros of a polynomial from looking at a graph and an equation. 
if you know the zeros of a polynomial, you can figure out an equation that works with them. Let's look at another example. If function f of x has zeros at negative 2 and 4, which of the following could be the definition of the function? The answer choices are all possible functions. Start by underlining the facts, circling the key words, and labeling the answer choices. Now, we could solve this question using algebra. We could go through all the answer choices, factor them, and see if their zeros are negative 2 and 4. Or we could plug negative 2 and 4 into the answer choices and see if any of them work. The second way seems easier, so let's go with that. We'll begin by plugging negative 2 into the answer choices. If an answer choice doesn't equal 0, it's wrong. Answer choice A becomes negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2. That turns into 4 plus negative 4, which equals 0. That's looking good so far, but we have two zeros to check and three more answer choices, so let's keep working. Answer choice B becomes negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 8. That simplifies to 4 minus 4 minus 8, which is not equal to 0, so cross off answer choice B. Answer choice C becomes negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 8. That simplifies to 4 plus 4 minus 8, which equals 0. So we'll have to come back and check answer choice C with our other 0 as well. Finally, answer choice D becomes negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 8. That works out to 4 plus 8 minus 8, which is not equal to 0. So cross off answer choice D. We're down to two answer choices, A and C. Luckily, we still have one zero we can check. Let's plug 4 into these two choices and see which one works. Answer choice A becomes 4 squared plus 2 times 4. That's clearly not equal to 0, so cross off answer choice A. We know the correct answer has to be C, but let's give it a quick look for good measure. When we plug in 4, answer choice C becomes 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8. That works out to 16 minus 8 minus 8. And sure enough, that equals 0. C is the correct choice. So we started this lesson with a scary sounding polynomial factors. But we've learned how to find the zeros and how to work with the zeros. And now hopefully it isn't scary at all. The way to keep improving lies in practice. So go and do a few more questions.